In this video, we're going to make a guessing game, and we're going to do it without loops. Now, normally, the guessing game is used to teach loops, and that's what you will do later. But first, we're going to build the guessing game with no loops. What I have here is just some basics to get started. So we have guesses is an integer, starts at 0. We're going to need a random number for the user to guess, and that's how we get it here. Now, it's requiring an input. Uh, not an import, and if you're in NetBeans, it'll import uh, prompt you automatically. We're using that with the next int method, so it's rand.nextint. Now, whatever my NetBeans is unpacking central repository, so I can't get the Java docs right here, but I just Googled it, so I just typed in Java util random, clicked on uh, the official Oracle. Uh, documentation, just search for next int. You can do control F for that. This next int with an integer as a parameter returns a random uniformly blah blah blah. Don't worry about that. Between zero inclusive and the specified value exclusive. So that means if I type in 10, it's going to give me a number between zero and nine. It won't give me 10. So if I, most people are going to try to guess a number between one and 10. And so if you want 1 to 10, you're going to have to do next int 10, which gives you 0 through 9, and then you add 1 to it separately. All right, I want to print it out right here. And that's basically the end of this program. Uh, this is for the input. So we'll just run this a couple times. And you should see number colon and then the value of n printed out. So we get 6, 9, 1, 3, 10. Okay, if you run it enough, you'll hopefully see all the numbers. All right, so that works. What we need to do next is get the user to guess. So we need a integer to save their guessed value. So I'll use G for that. Now, unfortunately, guesses, I didn't want to use just guess singular here. I want to use something different, so I just called it G. Now I started with initial value of negative one. You don't need to give it a value. I believe the initial value would be zero if you didn't give it one. All right, the way I do input is I use a scanner. And again, scanner is not uh, built in. You have to import it. So up here you can see import Java Util Scanner. You can also Google Java Util Scanner to see the different methods. The only one I'm gonna use is the next int right here. Now if I run this, it looks like it's stuck. What's happening, it's trying to get an input. It's waiting for me to type something like four, and then it's okay. So before that, you need a sout, S-O-U-T tab, if you're in NetBeans. So I'm gonna guess between one and 10. And I usually try to go colon and then a space at the end of these. And then we'll sout g, the value of g. All right, we'll give this a run. Between, all right, we'll go four. All right, so print it out four, so that's good. Between, all right, I also don't like the new line at the end of this, so if you notice when I ran it, the cursor is below where I'm expecting it to be as a user. So this one, instead of print ln, I like to just do a print right here. Uh, you do need to stop it if, uh, or you can just type in a number, or you can type in a letter and get an error, don't worry about that. That's called an exception. All right, so now it looks the way most users are expecting. There we go. So we'll cover what to do next in the next videos. The previous video, we set up all the variables we need and the random number, and we even read in a guess from the user. What we need to do next is give them another guess, but before we do that, we have to tell them if they're too high, too low, or it's possible they got the number correct on the first guess. All right, how do we do that? If statement is how we're gonna do it. Now, I don't normally like to do if else in general, but in this case, their guess is either correct or too low or too high. 
So if g equals n, so n is my random number, g is the guess, if g equals n, they won. Uh, one other thing, probably right after they guess, I should add one to guesses. So plus plus guesses or guesses plus plus. So otherwise guesses will be zero. So they just took a guess on this line right here and we're gonna increase guesses. So good guess, you are right. So you got it in, guesses, tries. All right, so if they get it correct, it'll tell them, good job. You could do return or you can do system.exit, and I believe zero is a good status to exit. What is wrong with this? Oh, unreachable statement. So you can either return or you can do system exit. I'm going to leave a return in there because you need to end the program. Otherwise, it's going to keep going. All right, so that's if they're right. Now, if they're wrong, else if, all right, g less than n. All right, your guess is too high. No, your guess is too low. All right, they are gonna have to guess again. However, if they're too high or too low, they're gonna be guessing again. So I'll do it, uh, we'll do code factoring in a second. So these are the two lines I need to move here, duplicate. All right, and now I'm doing almost the same thing except I want to flip the inequality. Your guess is too high. So one in 10, okay. So this should let them guess a second time if they're not right. All right, your guess is too high. All right, so I'll guess three. Now notice it doesn't do anything uh, once that happens. It does print out number because as a programmer, I need to know if my feedback is correct. The number is three, my guess is five, and it printed my guess is too high. That's correct because my guess is five and the number is three, so my guess is too high. I actually would have gotten it right. Look at that. Look at that. But I didn't write any code to handle that. So we're going to do that next, and you could probably guess what we're going to do. This is where we just left our code. It does tell the user too high or too low and ask them to guess again. One thing I want to do, your guess is too high, enter a guess between one and 10. I'd like to put all that on one line. So your guess is too high. It had a new line at the end. I'm going to strip that new line out and I'm going to put a space after that period. So it'll print these two without a new line in between. And I'm going to do the same thing up here. All right, next thing we're gonna do is code factoring. If you look, these lines are exactly the same. So what I'm gonna do is take them out of this else if, and I'm just gonna put them down here. So we can go in here, Alt Shift down to move, Shift Tab to unindent. So I move that down, and now I'm going to delete these extra lines here. All right, so the only difference is if G is too low, it prints out your guess is too low. If G is too high, it prints out your guess is too high. Either way, prints out enter your guess between one and 10, boom, and input that in. Okay, so what are we gonna do next? The same thing. Control shift down is how you duplicate. And we'll zoom out a little bit so you can see everything happening here. We have the same thing here twice. Now notice that because I use the variable guesses, oh, I better do plus plus guesses. So I have the right number of guesses. I might as well do that here. All right, 
we'll run it now. I believe if we get it in two shots, it'll work. All right. My number's too low. What should I guess? I'm thinking nine. Good guess. I'm very good. All right. I got it in two tries. Okay. And that is correct. I took two guesses and I got it. We're going to run it again. All right. Now I'm not going to guess five. Something tells me that's too easy. All right. Guess is too high. So let's guess three. That's lower. All right. It is too low. So if you look, there's actually a third time that we input a guess, but we don't do anything with it. All right, so we're going to wrap this up. We're only giving them three guesses in this particular game. So what we're going to do is just duplicate what I've highlighted. Control shift down, alt shift down moves it. All right, so here, Good guess, you got it in guesses tries. Okay, so that'll tell them if they're successful. If they're not successful, at this point, I don't care if it's too high or too low, it's just wrong. They're not gonna take another guess. Uh, so we'll just say you lose. Lose in, I wanna tell them the number of guesses. And we need a plus there. All right, so this should work. One in 10. All right, you do need to hide the, the secret number that's generated. So you do need to hide that in your final product. Guess is too low. All right, I'm gonna guess seven. Guess is too high. Enter guess between one and 10. All right, let's, uh, too low. Let's just pretend like we didn't read that. Nine. You lose in three tries. Perfect. All right. I don't need to print out this guess anymore. That's way up here. There we go. We're going to take that out. We don't need that. All right. Run this one more time. Five. Too low. Eight. Too low. Let's go with ten. Boom, good guess, congrats, you got it in three tries. All right, so this guessing game works as long as you get it in three or less tries. It's going to fail, or you're going to lose if you don't get it in three tries. Now, your assignment is to rewrite this so that it uses a loop. And typically you give the user, well, we'll talk a little more mathy in the next one, but you give them more than three tries, maybe four or five, six, but you should be able to change the number of tries. And if you look, if I gave the user six tries, I'd have to duplicate this line of this chunk of code a bunch of times. That's one way to solve the problem, but it's not a good way. And we're going to solve it using loops. In this video, we're going to make a guessing game and we're going to do it without loops. Now, normally the guessing game is used to teach loops. And that's what you will do later. But first, we're going to build the guess game with no loops. What I have here is just some basics to get started. So we have guesses is an integer, starts at zero. We're going to need a random number for the user to guess. And that's how we get it here. Now it's requiring an input, uh, not an import. And if you're in NetBeans, it'll import uh, prompt you automatically. We're using that with the next int method. So it's rand.nextInt. Now, whatever my NetBeans is unpacking central repository, so I can't get the Java docs right here, but I just Googled it. So I just typed in Java util random, clicked on uh, the official Oracle uh, documentation, just searched for next int. You can do control F for that. This next int with an integer as a parameter returns a random uniformly blah, blah, blah. Don't worry about that. Between zero, inclusive, and the specified value, exclusive. So that means if I type in 10, it's going to give me a number between zero and nine. It won't give me 10. So if I, most people are going to try to guess a number between one and 10. And so if you want one to 10, you're going to have to do next int 10 which gives you zero through nine, and then you add one to it separately. All right, I wanna print it out right here, and that's basically the end of this program. Uh, 
this is for the input. So we'll just run this a couple times and you should see number colon and then the value of n printed out. So we get six, nine, one, three, ten. Okay. If you run it enough, you'll hopefully see all the numbers. All right, so that works. What we need to do next is get the user to guess. So we need a integer to save their guessed value. So I'll use G for that. Now, unfortunately, guesses, I didn't want to use just guess singular here. I want to use something different, so I just called it G. Now I started with initial value of negative one. You don't need to give it a value. I believe the initial value would be zero if you didn't give it one. All right. The way I do input is I use a scanner. And again, scanner is not uh, built in. You have to import it. So up here you can see import Java Util Scanner. You can also Google Java Util Scanner to see the different methods. The only one I'm going to use is the next int right here. Now if I run this, it looks like it's stuck. What's happening, it's trying to get an input. It's waiting for me to type something like four, and then it's okay. So before that, you need a sout, S-O-U-T tab, if you're in NetBeans. So I'm gonna guess between one and 10. And I usually try to go colon and then a space at the end of these. And then we'll sout g, the value of g. All right, we'll give this a run. Between, all right, we'll go four. All right, so print it out four, so that's good. Between, all right, I also don't like the new line at the end of this, so if you notice when I ran it, the cursor is below where I'm expecting it to be as a user. So this one, instead of print ln, I like to just do a print right here. Uh, you do need to stop it if, uh, or you can just type in a number, or you can type in a letter and get an error, don't worry about that. That's called an exception. All right, so now it looks the way most users are expecting. There we go.